We have snow. Yes. I'm here in the bush. I'm at my double trapper's camp in the cedars, in the windy cedars. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I've been wanting to do this. I've been neglecting this camp. And uh, I'm so excited. This is my kind of weather. It's about 22 degrees and there's snow all over the ground and it's beautiful. We're going to take a time before the ground freezes. I'm going to dig some post holes. I'm going to redo my bunk here at the trapper's camp because my bunk needs a little work and uh, I'm going to build it to match the other bunk that I built with Jared and Jimmy. So this is going to be a project that probably spans the course of three or four days and afternoon here and there and then we'll end it off with a good classic camp out. This is like the Hilton, the Hilton of the woods.
not have in their camping gear Cajun campfire seasoning. sleep with them. Well, it's step two time. Let's see if it's worthy of a new. <laughs> We've got a brew dog, Elvis AF. Uh, reminds me of Corporal's Corner. Mr. Sean Kelly, a big inspiration on me as a bushcrafter. He always uses the term AF to describe something that is cool as. It gets a new. All right, that's pretty good. That's really good. I like that. It's got a fruit to it. Hoppy grapefruit, it says. Perfect. Yeah, you might wonder why I bring a glass into the bush. I like my brews from a glass, so I just throw a glass in, in my pack, you know, and uh, it just allows the aromas and the flavors to, to really bloom. So we're sitting here. Uh, it's been four days of work on this. Uh, a shelter like this, you're not going to do in one, you're not going to show up that morning, build your shelter, and camp that night. It's just not going to work that way. So put tin on it, put tin on the back. My goal is to eventually have the back raise up like a door so you can put a fire on the other side during the summer. But uh, for now, it's just down. We're getting a little rain, you can probably hear it on the tin, but it's pretty cozy in here. I had to redo this bunk because it was just getting kind of kind of shaky. Some of the wood was kind of rotten. So we went and got some hedge posts and put it in the ground. And uh, now this shelter should be here for a number of years with the tin on it and everything. And all you got to bring is your bed roll 
and you're pretty well and you know I even got a couple pans that I keep back here some cheap pans that I keep hanging in the tree so you pretty much have everything the lanterns stay back here all you got to do is just bring your bedroll and your clothes and stuff and you're good to camp so this is kind of a what I would call a semi-permanent bushcraft camp so anyway we're just uh, gonna sit here and enjoy this cold brewski and this warm fire it's about 30 I don't know 38 degrees something like that and it's supposed to dip down to about 33 tonight right around freezing so not too cold this campsite I would say would be pretty good down to about 20 degrees or even down into the teens at night you'd be just fine just have yourself a nice long fire and plenty of firewood on hand you're good to go anyway it's just about time to start cooking and I got something special for us tonight, so stick around. All right, we got some all rotten potatoes, as I like to call them, and a beef tender beef fillet. It says fillets. I'm curious if there's two in here. I guess we'll find out. I want to put them on a stick and kind of roast them like rotisserie style. That just seems to be the theme of this campsite. We did the cedar salmon here on a plank. We did the lamb on a spit, so I'm thinking beef tenderloin on a stick. That doesn't suck. My amazing girlfriend made me a salad to take out in the bush with me today. And nothing like good old Catalina dressing. And, uh, oh yeah. This goes perfectly with steak. Some romaine, good old romaine lettuce. A little bit of cheese shredded on top, a little Parmesan. Honestly, I feel like I'm at a steakhouse. So I cut up the steak and I put it in with my scallop potatoes. You want to talk about a heartwarming meal when it's, you know, 37 degrees out. But the most important side dish that I always carry in the bush when it doesn't get stolen. So I got to keep this under lock and key. I smell cottage cheese! <laughs> well, that was a delicious meal. That was awesome. So, I wanted to talk to y'all 
about uh, what is bushcraft? What's bushcraft to you? What's the definition of bushcraft to you? Uh, it's kind of a fine line. It's hard to find the definition for that when you talk to different bushcrafters and, and people that go out in the wilderness. Everybody has their own kind of idea of what bushcraft is. Bushcraft to me is just building something with the trees and you know with the wood that's growing in your area and so by that definition uh, log cabins could be considered bushcraft so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we're staying in a shelter tonight that I have put together with not just lashings but screws and you know you start incorporating tin into the structure and at what point does it become not bushcraft anymore at what point does this become a cabin or a barn or a shed or a shack or whatever you want to call it at what point does it become that and not bushcraft anymore to me this is still bushcraft because we're putting everything together with pieces of wood from trees that are growing in the area and mainly trees that are under three to four inches in diameter so we're talking two two and a half three inch diameter pieces at the most and uh, but we're also incorporating some old rusty tin that has been taken off some sheds before and uh, so to me this is 100% bushcraft but Bushcraft to me is just using the trees and the resources that are available in your area. But uh, it doesn't mean that it's illegal or wrong to use a drill. Or you saw me in this episode using an electric chainsaw. And there's nothing wrong with that, per se. Uh, what you have to do is decide where you want to limit yourself. Do you want to limit yourself to a certain time period? Do you want to do everything? Maybe you're in the rendezvous. Maybe you want to do everything like 1800s style or, you know, pre-1860 or pre-1840. You know, everybody's got their idea of what they want to do. But my big thing is get out into the bush and have some fun and incorporate. If you've got an old pile of tin somewhere laying out behind a barn, it's great for making a lean-to shelter. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Don't limit yourself to a certain, like you can only have hand saws or you can only have hand tools or whatever. If you want to limit yourself to that, then that's fine. But don't let it keep you from getting out in nature and just having a good time. Well, it's time for me to crawl in the old fart sack here. <laughs> just gonna get a get a good night's sleep here in the new and improved bunk in my trapper's cabin i love this i mean this is awesome you know and i just got to thinking it's too bad people don't build more buildings with black locust because that's mainly what this is built out of a black locust cedar and uh just a small amount of hedge but honestly if if people built like you know, hog houses and barns and shades for cattle and different things. A lot of people are going out and they're buying, you know, dimensional lumber for that. You could be making this kind of stuff out of black locust if you live in the uh, southeast Iowa region anyway. You know, northeast Missouri, west central Illinois, that area. Uh, there's This black locust is just plentiful here. And it's good and straight for a good... 10 12 feet anyway on most young plants so that's yeah, good stuff anyway uh food for thought if you're a bushcrafter or a farm guy in the southeast iowa region anyway i'm gonna hit the hay here we'll see you all in the morning and good morning well another successful night in the bush uh, the wind changed directions. It was out of the south yesterday. It's out of the north today. And uh, since I took my wall down in this shelter, it's not quite as warm. But uh, it's kind of just blowing the heat from the fire away. But 
that's okay. Uh, got plenty of blankets and dressed plenty warm. So we get up and uh, get this day started. I think it's coffee time. Okay, we'll just move this down into the cook position. Well, I had to drink my coffee from a beer can because uh, I forgot my mug. So, a little cowboy coffee. Cowboy coffee works great when the weather's really cold and your water's really cold. The colder your water is, the better it works at settling the grains. But, this is pretty good. I've got these little, I used up some, some little creamer things from like a restaurant. And then I've got these little sweet additions. These are stevia, so they're a zero calorie sweetener. But... I forgot how good this donut store blend is. This is good stuff. Mm, it just kind of warms the soul. It's a north wind and it's about 34 degrees. So, and it's like probably 90% humidity. So, it's kind of, it's one of those bone chilling types of cold. So, a good hot cup of coffee, good warm fire, helps a ton. I know one thing, I'm going to reconstruct my wall here on the other side of me because that helps break up that north wind. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And uh, the big lesson, the big takeaway from this camp out is uh, get out and do it. And if you have stuff laying around, uh, use whatever you've got at your disposal. To, uh, to build cool camping shelters and cool places to stay and get creative with it and have fun. Have fun, that's the most important thing. I think we get wrapped up in our, our lives and driving our cars and going to work and commuting and office work and everything else and we forget to get out and get some fresh air once in a while and it's therapeutic, it's, it's good for you. Even though sometimes I'm tired after a camp out, I'm always refreshed even though even if I didn't sleep good it's still refreshing and that week after that it just feels better it's you're more energized and everything from the outdoor so once again I slept great here at the trappers camp I've never had a bad sleep here at the trappers camp so that's kind of cool I sleep better here than I do in my cabin <laughs> so anyway thanks everybody for watching and if you're on YouTube, hit that bell icon, make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, check me out on Rumble. Uh, that's another platform that I'm really trying to push my videos on, so if you're watching on YouTube, uh, jump over to the Rockstar Farmer on Rumble and check that one out as well, and uh, subscribe to my channel on there. Anyhow, um, as always, we'll see you next time in the bush.